We've been working through this section of equations and we've taken a look at a number of the different types of equations that we get. In this video, we are going to focus on simultaneous equations. And that's where we are given two equations uh, and they each contain two variables. So an X and a Y and X and a Y, those are the most common ones, but they can obviously be any variables. And we need to then somehow solve them simultaneously. So what I wanna do is just break down the steps that we can use that'll always help us to solve these types of equations. The first thing you do if you are given simultaneous equations to solve, and the question even normally tells us solve simultaneously, so you're gonna be okay. Uh, but the first thing you do is you look at the two and you decide which one is simpler um, and you, get, you solve it so that you get one of the variables on its own. In other words, can I get x on its own on the one side of the equal sign or can I get y on its own on the one side of the equal sign? Once you've done that, the next step is to take the solution that you've solved here and substitute it into the second equation. So you're going to take whatever you had, you had x equals something, you're going to put that something into the second equation. Okay, don't put it into the same equation because you're going to end up uh, just working round and round in circles if you do that. Put it into the equation you haven't used yet and then solve. And then finally, you're going to take the solutions that you got here. So once you've solved in step two, you'll either have solved for x or for y. You're going to take those solutions and then substitute it back into one of the original equations. Okay, and if you have these steps down, simultaneous equations are going to be a breeze for you. So all that's left for us to do now is practice, 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 practice. Okay, what I do whenever I get these equations is I, have, I number them. I'm like, this one's going to be number one. This one's going to be number two. That helps me not get confused later on. Okay, then I have a look and I say, which one is simpler for me to get X or Y on its own? Okay, now we've got a couple of options here. But what I notice is that in equation one, Y is already on its own. So although there's a squared here and it might be considered a more complex, I usually just ask myself, which variable can I most quickly get on its own? And so since this is already the case, I'm going to just take this Y and the fact that it equals x squared minus 1. And in this equation, everywhere I see a y, I'm going to substitute it with x squared minus 1. So from equation 2 then, we are going to have the following. Instead of y, x squared minus 1 minus x equals 5. Okay, and now this is a quadratic equation because of this square here. So I am going to need to pull everything to the one side. So x squared minus x minus 6 once all terms are on the left-hand side. And then I can factorize that. x times x gives me x squared. And factors of 6, 3 times 2 will give me a 6. How can I use a 3 and a 2 to make this minus 1 in the center? I can say minus 3 plus 2. And then I just do a final check. A minus times a plus is a minus. 3 times 2 is 6. So there I've got my two answers. Either x minus 3 equals 0, which means x equals 3. Or x plus 2 equals 0, which means x equals minus 2. Okay. And so that's step 2 done and dusted. I've substituted in. Now I need to take these solutions and I need to substitute them back into one of the equations. Okay. And again, I've got options. I like to go back to the equation where the variable was already on its own. I feel like it's it's easier to do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, x equals 3 into equation 1. So then y is equal to, in the place of x, we've got 3 squared minus 1. 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. Okay, or our other option was x equals minus 2. And we also need to substitute that into equation 1. And so y is equal to minus 2 squared minus 1. Minus 2 times minus 2 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. And so there we have our solutions, which you can write as a set of ordered pairs. So we know that x equals 3 and y equals 8 is one pair. So we can say 3 and 8. And then we also know that x equals minus 2 and y equals 3 is another pair of solutions, so minus 2 and 3. Okay, and this notation is particularly useful if we are solving 
when it comes to working with graphs okay if they haven't asked for coordinate form you don't have to give them this but it is always helpful to wrap it up and say well therefore x equals 3 y equals 8 or x equals minus 2 and y equals 3. here's another example so again we're going to take our two equations and we're going to straight away say let's call this equation 1 and this equation 2. okay the first thing we need to do is check is one of them easier to isolate a variable okay and i'm leaning towards equation one because this is just minus y there's no coefficient here of y whereas here i'd have to divide things by three so let's let's work with equation one and we're going to say from equation one we're going to have minus y is equal to two minus three x and then what we want actually is just y so y is equal to we're going to change the signs here so this is going to become minus and plus and so i'm just going to change the order that i write them in because it helps me to make fewer mistakes later on so positive 3x minus 2 and that i'm actually going to call equation 3. all right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take equation 3 and substitute it into the equation we haven't used yet so we used equation 1 here so let's substitute into equation 2 now Okay, so everywhere that I have a y over there, I am going to substitute it with this whole y here of 3x minus 2. Okay, so what do we end up with? We end up with the fact that 3 times 3x minus 2 plus 9x squared equals 4. And now it's just something to solve. 9x minus 6 plus 9x squared equals 4. Well, actually let's move that 4 over so long so we're going to say minus 4 equals 0 and then this is a quadratic equation that's why i wanted to move that minus 4 so 9x squared and what do we end up with there plus 9x minus 10 is equal to 0. okay now we need to look at the factors of 9 and the factors of 10 that we can combine to give us a positive 9 in the middle Right, so we start here with 9. 3x times 3x gives me 9x squared. And then we're going to next to that write factors of 10. So that's going to be 5 times 2. And then what we do is we cross multiply. So 3x times 5 is 15x. And 3x times 2 is 6x. Okay, can I use these terms here, 15 and 6, to make positive 9 in the middle? I most certainly can if I say this is a positive 15 minus 6 that'll work okay and why do we need that those two signs actually tell us what needs to be written in our brackets here so this factorizes so nicely and it gives us 3x plus 5 and then the next bracket is 3x minus 2 equals 0 okay so now I can solve and I can say this is going to give me, um, if 3x plus 5 equals 0, then 3x equals minus 5, and x actually equals minus 5 over 3. Or, 3x equals positive 2, and x equals 2 over 3. So we've got our solutions for x, and now, to get our solutions for y, we need to go and substitute into one of the given equations. Okay, or... We can even go here to equation 3, where y is already on its own. So that's what I would advise. So uh, let's write it up here. x equals minus 5 over 3 into equation 3. So we've got y is equal to 3 times minus 5 over 3 minus 2. Okay. This is quite a nice one here, because that 3 over 1 means those can cancel each other out. So we end up with minus 5 minus 2, which is minus 7. So x equals minus 5 over 3, and y equals minus 7. Okay, that's our first solution. Or we can sub in x equals 2 over 3 into equation 3. So y is equal to 2 over 3, ooh, 3 times 2 over 3 minus 2. Okay, those threes again cancel, so we end up with 2 minus 2, which is just 0. So therefore, x equals 2 over 3, and y equals 0. 
there we have our solutions for that so you see how if you follow step by step you you can't really go wrong so it's about choosing a simpler equation getting one variable on its own substituting into the equation you haven't used yet solve and then don't forget a lot of students stop here they forget are oh, we solving simultaneously for both so then you go back and you substitute in your answers to get your final answers there for your second variable okay here's one last example and stay tuned for this one because int is going to get us thinking okay so we've got equation one and equation two which one is simpler to get a variable on its own i am most certainly leaning there towards equation two okay so from equation two we know that minus x is equal to minus 2y plus 2. And so x is equal to 2y minus 2. Okay, very similar to how we isolated the variable in the previous example. Okay, now what we want to do is everywhere that there's an x in equation 1, we want to substitute with 2y minus 2. So let's do that. So we're going to have 4y y's are allowed to stay minus 2 this x is squared so i'm going to say 2y minus 2 times by 2y minus 2 that's just going to save me a step later is equal to be careful here's another x that we could easily miss 2y minus 2 minus 4. okay now if you remember your shortcuts from grade 10 this is a square bracket so we can just square the first 4y squared uh, square the last plus 4 and then multiply the two terms inside so 2y times minus 2 gives us minus 4y and double that so minus 8y you can in fact jump straight to that step if you're comfortable if not then just foil the sides collect like terms you will end up at the same answer okay so we've got 4y minus 2 times this bracket is equal to 2y minus 2 minus 4 so 2y minus 6 on that side okay let's distribute this minus 2 it needs to multiply by every term in that bracket so we've got 4y minus 8y squared plus 16y minus 8 let's move this 2 and 6 over minus 2y plus 6 equals 0 all right now I just want to collect some like terms. y squared, there's just the one y squared there. y and y and y, quite a few y's. And then we've got some constants, minus 8 and plus 6. Okay, so we've got minus 8y squared here. Then we've got plus 20y, so it's plus 18y once we've minus the 2. And then finally, minus 8 plus 6 is minus 2 equals zero okay now this i notice immediately all of these terms are actually divisible by minus two so let's do that and see if this becomes easier for us to solve so we've got four y squared minus nine y plus one equals zero so what i notice straight away when i get ready to factorize this is that there's no way that I can use the factors of 4 and the factors of 1 to make something big enough to get me up to 9. And so that reminds me of what we learned in one of our previous videos. We have this quadratic formula that we can use. Okay, so x is equal to minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. Okay, seeing as though we are solving for y, this, the subject of this formula would just change, but that's okay. The process remains the same. So now we can jump straight into this formula and we can say, well, y is equal to minus b, so minus minus 9, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a c. And that is all going to be divided by 2 times a. Okay. Let's neaten it up a bit. We're going to take it up to the top. So if we just multiply what can, we can multiply, then we end up here with these two options. So either it's 9 plus this root divided by 8, or it's 9 minus this root divided by 8. Okay, and that's going to give us our two answers. 
So either y is equal to 2, 13, or y is equal to, and there on our calculator we're going to substitute in a negative, and that's going to give us 0, 12. Okay, and now that I have those two answers, I go back to my equation that I worked with, uh, this one here, which we should have called equation 3 when we created it, and we're now going to substitute our answers in. So we're going to say y equals 2, 1, 3 into equation 3, and we end up with the fact that x is equal to 2 times 2, 1, 3 minus 2, which is 2, 2, 6. So that means... Um, x is equal to 2, 2, 6, and y is equal to 2, 1, 3. Or our other answer here, we're going to substitute y equals 0, 1, 2 into equation 3. And so there we end up with x equals 2 times 0, 1, 2 minus 2. And that will give us an answer of minus 1, 7, 6. And so that means x is equal to minus 1, 1, 7, 6, and y is equal to 0, 1, 2. So there we have it. That's a typical grade 11 question that we can expect to see. Simultaneous equation that involves using this quadratic formula.